Okay, so um, I was writing about the stars this morning, and um, I began to write, um, I am a star sent from the universe playing my part in a heavenly unfoldment. Now, you've got to imagine this, because I am a star sent from the universe playing my part in a heavenly unfoldment. I play the part of the martyr. I play the part of the slave. I play, ooh, I play the part of depression. I've been sad. I've been alone. I've been the employee, and I've been the employer. I play the part of the wife. I play the part of the mother. I play the part of the aunt and the grandmother. I play the part of the daughter. I play the part. I cannot forget the parts I've played as in poverty, abuse mentally and physically. I can't even forget the parts that I've played as prideful, envious, jealous, confused, rebellious, and shameful. Many parts I've played. However, today comes the beginning of a new era, whereas I realize I'm a star playing and convincing stellar winning part. Therefore, I will reenact my part with all my heart. I will convince those who are part of the shows I am in that life unfolds by dynamics of your becoming the star you were sent to be. Play your part and release the energy that comes with your part from your heart. All right, you guys like that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. All right, so the stars created by God, it says Isaiah 40 and 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these stars. The one who leads for their host by number. He calls them all by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. Um, God, in Genesis 1 and 16, made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. So in most cases, when we discuss stars, we think about the stars of Hollywood, those that we see on TV. But I remember different times in my life when I dreamt about being on a stage or getting ready in a platform of a stage. Um, I even remember, you know, the um, ministries that I follow in New York saying, you know, that it's your time to shine, Kim. And so with all that being said, I looked at the inspiration of the stars today, and I began to write on them because last night I had a vision of two stars coming together. And the two stars were wrapped in, um, first of all, their stars met and united. And then there was covering, white covering that went around them. And then it was like a lace, um, um, what's the name of that paper? Anyway, it was a lace type of white that went around the covering, kind of like to bind them together. So I looked at that, and I saw life in it because I saw energy moving through it. And these were bodies as well, but the beginning of them was the stars that represent who they are. Um, a lot of Africans will say, say um, it was his star. That That's just his star. You do have some astrologists that are talking about it now, saying that, well, the star leads you. Because even in, um, in the Bible, it says that the three wise men were led by the star. And so the eastern star, by the way. And so many people do not understand the leading of the star because they only see the physical plane. They don't even grasp a hold to things that God is saying concerning the luminaries because so many people have been taught against the heavenly 
However, when you look at the eastern star and the wise men were led, it had to be a star that they could see, not just by the physical plane, but by the spirit, because the Bible is spiritual. So they were led by the eastern star, and they followed it, and they found Jesus, so to speak. Now, if your star is leading you, and you allow it to guide you as the eastern stars, you can't go wrong. So it puts you in a place where you begin to look at things prospectively, and you say, where am I going and what is this leading me to? Now, a person that has my life might become frustrated because there's so many leadings that I have by the Spirit of God in my star that they would question why they've been in so many different paths and directions. But I was listening to T.D. Jakes and someone else, and they explained the trailblazer, and I would take the trailblazer. There has been pathfinders. There has been um, disciples. You know, there's been Jesus in the way. I'll take the trailblazer because the trailblazer kind of explains my path. And he was saying that the path is not open. So the trailblazer creates the path, which means that there's more robust endurance and, and, and strength that's needed because they're doing something that someone, no one else has done, per se, in your, your family or generations, which is necessary to find. Now, the trailblazer will follow its star, and the trailblazer will be committed to God and it starts simply because it's deposited in them and their DNA for this. Now, I kid you not. However, when we move on and we understand the star, it takes us back to the stage, the stage of life. Times when I saw myself being made up and I was sitting in chairs that actors do, and believe me, I've never had the desire to be an entertainer anyway dreaming about being on stage with other family members and just realizing that the reason why some of these things came is because I am playing a part in the stage of life. It makes it easier when you know you're playing a part because you do know that your part can change. You see, even after 18 to 19 years, mothers and fathers should not really be taking care of their children because the part is over. They might need some extra help. It's up to the parents, but when we look at the parts that we play in life as a sister, as a daughter, my part has been as a daughter to respect my mother, but it's times when I corrected my mother for the sake of righteousness. Some people don't have the guts for the nurse to do it, but in a movie, they will do it. If they were getting paid, they would do it. I find myself getting paid spiritually. And so this inspiration that I received today gives me more enthusiasm in the perspective of recreating my life where, you know, things have been broken or been put to death and now I'm reevaluating to see what is definitely growing and what's alive. But on the stage of life, if I don't pay attention, I would never realize that there were some things that needed to die in order for the newness of who I am and even revelation and wisdom to come. Now, this is not about me, but it helps for a person to understand from a person that's making the way, creating a way how they got through and others will get through because it's not easy when you live in a world of um, natural things and worldly things you're connected to material yet you are governed by spirit more than anything and material is not something that you can be attached to so it's a lot there but on the stage of life you will call to play a part. I mean, you can ask yourself, am I playing the part properly? Do I know the part that I'm playing right now? And 
if there's any doubts in the part that you're playing, ask yourself why you thought you needed to play it that way. For instance, some of us are duplicating patterns of our family, but we're not getting the results that we want. So who told you that you had to duplicate the pattern of your family if it's not working? See, trailblazers change things. They change the pattern of families. You see, that's an example. I don't want to give any more because I need for you to start thinking on this stage of life. When you go to work, it's a new stage. It's different from at home. Your, your, your persona changes, you know? In relationship, you're playing a part, girlfriend, boyfriend, married, however it goes. Friendships, you're playing a part. And it's not to say that you need to be funny. You phony, you need to understand that you're playing a part. Now, while you're playing the part, will you get an Academy Award? Yeah? Will you? You receive an award for the role that you have played. Something to think about. Because a lot of us are playing life, and we're not playing in the field of um, accomplishment, achievement, overcoming. We're just playing. And I want to just kind of fixate on overcoming. Because if I'm overcoming something, that means that I'm defeating some past issues. I'm not staying in the same place thinking like I used to. I'm not even thinking like, you know, my family did. Why? Because I'm a trailblazer. Some things that my family were given to do are the same things I'm given to do, and I definitely have taken it further. So when you look at the part of a philanthropist, or the part of initiating to build a study group or a homeless ministry or um, you do IT work, you're a technician, you got to realize the importance of the part that you play. When Steve Jobs commit, when he made the iPhone, this dude is still his family making money off of each iPhone that comes in and he is dead. What a powerful part to play. You see? But it was in Steve Jobs, and he was a poor man, young man. It was in him to create the computers and then get to the iPhones, you know? It took time, but he played his part. Now, ask me if I know that he knew he was playing a role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think after a while, when they was calling him back and asking him to come in to do this work after they had dismissed him, he knew the part he played was valuable. So it's with us. When we go into our workplaces tomorrow, it's not to disrespect um, anybody, but it's time to man up within yourself. Because if you don't understand the part that you play in the, the place that you work or in your home, in your relationship, if you doubt, you have fear, you're not shining. You're not shining. And there's no star that's going to be followed if you don't believe in yourself. Stars lead people. So stars is what we are. We're leaders. Stars lead people. I think about the stars in Hollywood. People look up to them. But some of them don't even have the information that I'm given tonight. It's powerful. I know it because I looked at it and I said, wow. Thank you for all the hell I've been through this year because my teaching is going up, 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 okay? And then it is God in me that I give thanks to. Why? Because God allowed me to go through all of this stuff, brokenness, you know, to be so humble to look at things and say, you created the stars in the heaven. You really did. And there's some stars that are perpetrating but we want to call them out and let them know that there's authentic stars. You see, stars has been through hell and back, like Jesus star, your star, my star, and we made it. We arrived on the scene. 
because we were created for the endurance to overcome. Now, if that don't mean something to somebody, it means a lot to me. I could feel that in my heart because we could have been dead a long time ago, but God has saved us for such a time as this. And there was a start even in um, Esther's chapter that her uncle gave her. I remember dreaming about it before um, the movie came out. The the stars were glistening all over my body um, in a dream that I had. I oftentimes remember it, and that's when I went to get um, a um, charm I used to wear the star David. I don't wear it anymore. I probably will go back and get it since, you know, we're shining. But the star represents illumination. The the luminary prospects, even in the Bible, they talk about your star can go out and your star can be lit. There is a time when the star will go out. It's not to say that you're dead. It's just not shining. Why? Because even, you know, death comes to stars. However, we're not talking about a death of a star right now. We're talking about the understanding of the creation of the star. And the star comes from the sun. And so we're powerful beings, but we have to know our position. Every day that we get up and we get ready to go and do what we're doing, we're driving down the street. I'm a star. I am. And it creates a velocity of, excuse me, of um, confidence, not over, you know, over uh, in a pride perspective, but I am a star. I'm shining. I'm great. If you don't give that to yourself and understand that you're playing a role, then you will miss the mark. You're playing a role because everybody else is too. The people that created the businesses, they created it not just for work. They may have created it in their mind, but God allowed them to create it. And those creations of workplaces that stay in perspective right now for the next two years, if they stay in structure, they're awesome. But a lot of those structures are going down. So the creator used a person to orchestrate a platform. Everywhere that you go, we're working on platforms. And we're making businesses, people, lives, men and women, relationships, we're making them shine. Now, that's not to say that we're greater than them, because I believe, as I told Talana earlier, I think I found the perspective of my life and some of the frustrations. I have read and studied my horoscope and it tells me a whole lot about people actually sewing into my life. Partnerships that are governed to help me. Um, Family members in the same perspective. Now, when you can understand that part of your life and you can understand that you can't just disconnect from people, you got to play the part with them that you're called to. But you only will know this through God and you. I do know that I'm a core, intricate player in the lives of my family for generational curses to be broken and also in communities and cities and states. But there's other things that have taken place that could have taken that understanding from me this year that I did not allow to take from me. Because no matter how the work gets done in the um, purpose, the process, and um, that, that word I'm looking for, what God gave me to do, I still, my mind is set on it, healing families. So when you... Look at your life from this point on. Look at it from the perspective that you are a star. You're shining in people's lives. Your star is healing people. Your star is um, utilizing wisdom and, 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 and 
actually filtrating other people's lives. Okay? Things that other people cannot do. Now, other people will bring to you things that they can do. That's what makes this life so wonderful. And this here, uh, uh, um, being a star on a platform, because everybody has a part to play. It's just that you got to get yours together in order to help others to get theirs together. You got to know yours. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Hi, Ms. Kim. This is Diamond. I just wanted to let you know that I um I'm here. Hi, like Diamond. Doing... Hi. Oh, okay. All right, good. I hope you heard some of it. Um, if not, we'll send you the um, recording. So, um, thanks, Diamond, for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for um, inviting me here to listen. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. I'm muted. Was that me? No, ma'am, I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. All right, um, no one has any questions, right? Correct. Okay, so you have, um, I'm a star, and I'm playing my part in the, um, in life concerning the star, and others are playing theirs. So you need to figure that out, what part you're actually playing and become accommodated with it because some people are still confused about why they're here and what they're doing. Um, again, your role as a mother, your role as a father, your role as a sister, all of these are different parts that you play, but did you ever realize it? And so King James Version of, let's see, I went down 148 and 3. It says, praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. So the the shining stars, they get more of the glimmer as they praise God. Why? Because your, your release of who you are, your release of hurt, anger, and bitterness begins to dissipate through praise. Okay, and your star will shine brighter. The um, three wise men will be able to see you. They'll see your star shining from afar, and they'll go to length to see who you are as the baby Jesus. You just have to think about it and stop thinking about the Bible in context to religion because the Bible is very deep. I told Alana, you got to go in depth because you're a adept. You can write that word down. Adepts, they study spiritual things. Spiritual things as we study turn our lives around if we get a good understanding and that connection with God the way that we should. Some people will say, if you do this this way or that way, that you're not connected. Your connection is in the realm of what God has called you to. And that doesn't mean that you dip out or you dip in because you make God an excuse to um, actually live the way that you want to. No, God governs us. That's why we have a star. All right? And so... If you if you want to know more, then of course you can go and look up. You know what is the star connected to your zodiac sign? Your zodiac sign is actually your star. So that's your sun and your moon and your and your ascendant. All right. So anyway, any questions? We'll go ahead and I'll ask um, Anora or Talana to pray.
Um, I just wanted to, before um, Solana prays, I just wanted to um, bring up again that, you know, what you had said last week and again what you just said, you know, about, um, sorry, about basically us being wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, you know, the things the things that we're doing in our, in this life right now, um, the things that we feel like are possibly like our major rules, those are actually secondary to the reason why we're we're here. Those are secondary to our actual purpose. Our purpose to be here is not, you know, just to be wives and mothers and sisters and, you know, to serve in that capacity. Mm -hmm. But um you know, we, we, you know, when we came down here, we came down here for a greater purpose. You know, our lives that we're living here are to serve him. And um, it's all for a bigger purpose. And so, um, you know, as well as the things that we go through, um, mm -hmm. you know, God won't put more on us than we can bear. And so this is, you know, part of the mission, so to speak. So it's one of those things that you can think about when you're going through something just, you know, real tough that, okay, you know what, this is just part of the mission, you know, this is part of the mission that we agreed to to be here. And um, this is going to serve, you know, a greater purpose. So just wanted to add that. Yeah. I think that's a good um, add in an analogy and it's good to be able to hear other perspectives because, it's not that you give a message to manipulate or control a person's thinking, but what you do, do is break down barriers of thinking that we've had for so long, constructs, um, concepts of other people, you know, that we've taken on. And, I mean, we sit here right now today and look at relationships that went bad, and we can say, well, it's not a matter of, is it my fault or their fault? But you can look at yourself and know that you are ordering relationships by the way that your environment brought you up. And when I say your environment brought you up, the things around you created you. So what do you do with that now? You know, I believe that you keep what is good for you, but you take out what is not good when you start waking up and realizing that you're actually, you've been living my, I've been living my environment's life, not my life. So where is my life in this? And, you know, the thing about my life is that my star is speaking to me when I become frustrated. And it's saying, come on, let's do something we need to create because baby, we're stars. You know, maybe we got our part that we're acting out. And it's not just an act for me. It's the motion of who I am at the time. Sometimes we've been acting depressed or angry. We've been acting, and we don't even know how to overcome that that that, that scripture. Or other other people will say that um, program, that script. I'm sorry. It's a script. Anger is a script. I expect you to act a part of angry. Why? Because you're in the flesh. You're not in the spirit. So you're not going to act in love. I expect you to act out of um, hatred. Why? Because you've been in the environment of ha hatred. So you expect it to act that way. Acting. You see? Why you act like that? See, people been using the words, but we, we didn't hear them. Why you act like that? Because I didn't know how to act no better. I didn't even know I was acting, you know? But I can't be who I'm actually called to be, um, a star, if I'm acting angry. I need to act a better part. G give me another part, please, because now I realize. What, what, what part do I want to play now? Well... Let me just enjoy myself by creating, just saying that I want more of spirit, love, peace, and joy. And in the midst of that, I want some parts where I have a script where I can drive a Maserati and have a mansion. Why not? 
and I'll have a man that actually loves me. But I'm not attached to them or the things because I've been through hell, and I know being attached can hurt my heart again. So I want to stay detached, but thank you, God, for answering my prayer. This is called dreaming. I just talked about some things that I want. And it's okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So I write them down. And the Lord, who is my shepherd, will communicate with my star because my star is putting the radiance out of concerning what I desire. You see, no more blockages because I've been broken. So my part as a broken individual has, you know, come to stand on the stage now and talk to young women, create um, women's conferences. You see. But in the midst of that, it's not making me shine. I'm bringing others to shine, you see. And so that is the part of my star, what my star does. It understands that generations of women and men have to be groomed because generations such as mine are going to pass on. So we got to get that emotion to work and understand the power that we wrought has to do with the star and how many people will be influenced to follow our star as they did to start at least led to Jesus, you see? And I know that some people, they're unbelievers, but if they keep unbelieving, then they'll never have nothing that's going to manifest other than their unbelief. So let's believe and manifest belief. Let's believe that we have the money that we need to pay off bills. Why? Because all of the universe and God's word is about faith and unrealistic or um, not unreal much, but yeah, it can be unrealistic because some people don't believe what we're talking about. But um, spirit things are things that are not seen. So you got to dream and you got to believe and bring it here. And when you're going through hell, you got to understand that hell wants you so it can put your star out. Hell does not want powerful people to lead, uh, live or, or lead or be in their position. That's why you have so much trouble. You got to remember that. You're important. That's why you're having all of them. Now, one of the other things is, is as you take on the star, remember that stars have wisdom. They have knowledge. They have understanding. Stop making stupid decisions. Stop making stupid decisions. Start making decisions based off of your star, who you are. You're confident. You're fearlessly and wonderfully made. God loves you individually. Therefore, Look at yourself in a different way. When you get up in the morning, even from this point, look at yourself in a different way. Know that God is unfolding some powerful things. They have to come to pass. Why? Because you were created for greatness. You're not counted out unless you count yourself out. God meant all these things for you. And you have to look at all the things that God meant for you rather than all the things that God did not mean and stop making choices that will not get you what you need to get in the path of greatness. All right. All right. So if you guys have nothing else to add, then I will ask Talana and Honor to, um, to pray. Anybody else have anything they want to add before we close out? Did someone say something? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for this word tonight. But most thank of all, God, we thank you for reminding about the internal work that we will be doing 
on not just on a continuous basis, but more on an in-depth basis, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, for reminding us that we're a star. And we thank you for reminding us on embracing who we are and what you have called us to be. Lord, we ask that we fix our minds to get in line with what Spirit is saying and the instructions that you have for us moving forth in this here time, Lord God. Mm -hmm. All nations are affected right now, Father God, not just the people that are on this mm -hmm. Bible study line. And the shakeup, Father God, that we're all experiencing, Lord, we know, Father God, that if we resist, we make it harder amongst ourselves. And, God, we just thank you right now for giving us this awareness that we have right now. Bless Ms. Kim, Father God, for bringing the word forth with such instruction, Father God, so that we can pre not just prepare ourselves, Father God, but so that we can also be there to assist others. Change is coming, Lord God, and we thank you right now, Father God, for getting us ready. We thank you for preparing our hearts. We thank you for preparing our minds. We thank you, Father God, for even the spiritual surgery yes. that's taken, Father God, with no anesthesia, mm -hmm. no pain medicine, Father God, just us counting on you for mm -hmm. our true healing, Lord God, mm -hmm. in the recovery room, Father God, in the rehabilitation mm -hmm. room, Lord God. We thank you right now, Father mm -hmm. God, for our spiritual rehabilitation. We thank you for our spiritual yeah. recovery, Lord God. And we mm -hmm. thank you, Father God, that once we are healed, Father God, that we will shine bright like never before. Lord, Teach us not to run from the internal work, Father God. Yeah. Teach us not to, for us to resist it, Father God, for us to face it right where it is and allow you to do the work that you have called us to do, Lord, Lord God. Now. You are a perfect surgeon, Father God. Yeah. There's Lord. nobody else, Father God, that can do the work. There's no other doctor on the planet that can do the type of work that you can do in our hearts, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the spiritual surgery right now, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that you remind us to shine bright, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that even when we're in the midst of the waiting room, Father God, we're sharing with somebody our recovery, our spiritual recovery process, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, that the things that are laid on the table, Father God, the things that you are emptying out of us, Father God, that they're dead, that they stay dead, Father God, and that we do not mm -hmm. uh, bring them back to life, Lord God, but we leave it right there so that we can grow. Let us hold on to our truth, Father God, but the truth that you want us to recognize in ourselves, Father God, um, not the, the, the fakeness of it, not the mask. Not the, not what everybody else says that we're supposed to be, Father God, but the truth, Father God. And I thank you right now that as each person is on this line, that they are very intentional in this season that's coming um, with the internal yeah. work that we have to do. Because the internal work that we have to do ultimately, Father God, manifests into what our future is going to look like here pretty soon. And we just thank you right now for it. And we thank you for the teacher that you've blessed us with, that you continue to bless us with, Father God. And we thank you that class is definitely in session. Notepads are on the table, and it is definitely testing time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hope everybody sharp sharpens thank their numbers. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the favor that you guys are having in the financial blessings and even in some of the families where there's going. You know, people are going through some hardships. The hardships will come easier as we make better decisions. And I know, Alana, your brother is going through some things, but God is um, assisting him um, with these things, um, I heard, during um, the um, message and um, while Tulana was praying. So um, be encouraged, and we pray for employment status and creative status that will take us into new platforms. And I just thank you for the opportunities that you are giving your people tonight, Father. I see the connections, and I thank you for um, the protection over the opportunities that you're granting season. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood, and we thank you for financial blessings. We said, um, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, send now prosperity, send now prosperity, send now prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring your release for your children and for your family all throughout the universe and 
in the communities. We thank you that the universe supports us and that we're thriving and that we're coming into a season of harvest, breakthrough, protection, protection. We just call those angels a protect right now. Be gathered around each and every person that is here and even those that are not on but go into the households and be there for them. In Jesus' name, we thank you for favor, favor in whatever situation that each and every person is walking through. Favor, favor, favor. We thank you that we are the lenders and no longer the borrowers. We're the head and not the tail. We thank you that we're the beginning and not the end, and we just declare that we're living healthy, stable lives. We're living healthy, stable lives. And we thank you that the word covers the people, and we thank you, God, for the covering of the land and the new vehicles that are coming. Thank you that there is nothing that can hinder it. Thank you for miracle works in the name of Jesus and titles that we have concerning real estate. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, yeah, pull out the pencils. God bless y'all. Celebrate. Amen. Good night. The number two pencils, they have to be sharp.